Folk don't even know who you are. You have to free. You have to free yourself. You have to free yourself because, see, we have become a people. We love to count trophies. We love to count trophies, but we don't like to count scars. We love to count trophies, but, but we don't like to count scars. And what I have found out is that it is not the trophy that makes me successful, but it's the scars that I have. It's the scars that I have. It's the things that I have gone through. It is the scars that I have that make me who I am. It is these scars that I have. You may not be able to see the scars, but I've been through some things that have made me who I am. It wasn't just a trophy. No, the trophy, the trophy is nice. The trophy is well. Amen. But it's the scars, the stuff that you had to come through that makes you the person that you are today. Tell your neighbor, I got some scars. I got, I got some scars on me. I got some scars. If you ever sit down and talk to me, I have some scars on me. I have some things that, that I've been through, amen, who have, that has made me who I am. I know, amen, I may not look like much, but I have survived some things. I know I may not look like much, and it may not look like much to you, but I have survived some things. On this morning, I've come to talk to some survivors. On this morning, I've come to address some survivors. A survivor, to be a survivor by definition, is simply a person that copes well with difficulties in their life. A survivor is a person who knows how to cope with difficulties in their life. And what I found out is that one of the key components to survival is, watch this, opposition. One of the key components to survival is controversy. One of the key components to survival is when something is coming against you. The Bible said that we have overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Well, if you call, we love to say that we are overcomer and high five neighbors and say we are an overcomer. But one of the key components to be an overcomer is that you have to have overcome something. If you are an overcomer, what have you overcome? See, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to weed out all the fake overcomers. You calling yourself an overcomer, you ain't been through nothing. Uh, you call yourself an overcomer, and the first drop of trouble, you turn around and run. See, I'm trying to weed out the fake overcomers. I'm, I want to talk to some real folk in here on this morning who left some stuff at home and still came to church with a praise on their lips. Who tell your neighbor, I am a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I've gone through some stuff. I, I've, 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 I've taken some stuff. There's some stuff that I had amen, to go through to get where I am. Now, here's the thing now. What I am right now may not look pristine. It, it may not look perfect. It may not look, amen, like how you think that it should look. But the very fact that I've come through some stuff and my hands are still lifted. The fact that I've come through some stuff and my mouth is still giving God praise, it still makes me victorious. Oh, yeah, I may be, I may be driving a Honda, amen, while you're driving a Mercedes, but you don't know what it took for me to get my Honda. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know what it took for me to get that Honda. Amen. It took some prayer for me to get that thing. It, it took prayer for me to get where I am right now. Stop downgrading yourself and start celebrating the victory that God performs in your life. Wash that thing up and keep rolling. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because I am, I am, I am, I am a survivor. I have victory. I may not have a trophy, but watch this. I do have a story. I may not have a trophy, but, but I, I do, I do have a story. See, what you must understand is that it takes overcoming faith. Somebody say overcoming faith. It takes overcoming faith in order to survive some things. Uh, what I found out, and I've seen it on TV, when two people, amen, that have served in the service and they've gone through wars or two, two athletes, they're talking, uh, they don't just compare rings and they don't just compare trophies. They compare scars. They talk more about their scars than their trophies. 
They talk more about their scars than their, than, than, than their little championship rings. They say, yeah, I got this ring, but see, you see my finger? How, how it don't, it's not even straight anymore. I got that. They can remember exactly how it happened. They, they talk about their scars. They boast in their scars because it's something that made them who they are. It's something, amen, that gave them, amen, the tenacity to keep going. In other words, let me get churchy with you. It's their testimony. All right, we just go churchy real quick. Amen. So y'all can't get with the other stuff. All right, it's their testimony. Look at your neighbor and say, I have a testimony. Yeah, I've been through some stuff. There's some stuff I had to go through. I've been through a testimony. I have a testimony that if I ever told you what I really went through, if I ever told you my real testimony, your mouth would drop. I know I don't look like what I've been through, but if you ever heard what I really went through, the rape that I had to go through, the molestation that I I had to go through the abuse that I had to go through. I know I may not look like it, but I have a story. I have a testimony. I am a survivor. Tell your neighbor, I am a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I have a story. I've experienced frustration. I've experienced loss. I've experienced turmoil. I've experienced all of these things, but I am a survivor. So this morning, I didn't come to make you sad, but this morning, I actually came to celebrate you because you're here, and you're not just here existing, but you're living your life. You made a decision that out of all I've been through, I'm not going to let it take me down, but I'm going to keep on living. I'm going to keep on striving, and I'm going to keep on thriving in spite of the all the things that has happened in my life. I am a survivor. We see in our text, we see in our text that this is during the days of David. It's during uh, the, the reign of David, and there is a famine in the land. The famine is going on for three years. The famine has lasted for three years. It's this famine, and the famine is an interruption in one season. It is not a season itself. It is an interruption in one season. And what characterizes a famine is the length that it goes. And uh, this, famine has, this famine has gone on, amen, for three years. And David inquires of the Lord. In other words, he asks God what is, what's, what's going on. And, you know, oftentimes, oftentimes when things are not going well in our lives, uh, uh, the, we, we talk to everybody except for God. Uh, when things, when things are, when things ain't adding up in our lives, we'll talk to everybody except for God. We will post it, and Amen. We'll get all types of opinions, and we'll talk to all types of people. But I want to encourage you that when things in your life are not adding up, that's your cue that maybe you need to go talk to God. He inquired of the Lord. He inquired of the Lord. What is going on? He inquired of the Lord. What, what is happening? Why, why the famine? The Bible says that the Lord, he answers David and he tells him it is because of the bloody house of Saul. It's because of what Saul did. The thing that you're having to experience right now is because of what Saul did. Now, here's the thing. Saul is not alive right now. Saul is dead. Saul is dead at this moment, but still what is going on and what is taking place and what David is having to deal with is what Saul did before he died. Yeah, yeah he, he, he's dead. He's dead. Saul is dead, but his decisions are still alive. <laughs> Saul is dead, but the decisions that he made is living on. Well, well, let me stop and pause just for a moment. And let me, let me just tell you, you've got to be careful the decisions that you make. Because the decisions that you make right now will affect people down the line that are connected to you. You've got to be careful about the decisions that you make. You've got to consider everybody when you make a decision. That's why you can't afford to be selfish. Because when you you selfish, all you're thinking about is yourself, but you've got to consider everybody else when you make a decision. Even us, even us as parents, we got to be careful that we that we deal with the things that we have to deal with, even in our bloodline, because the thing that you don't deal with gets passed down. 
Huh? If you don't deal with it, all you do is pass it down to the next generation. So now your Paul of the Son is having to fight your devils. And Y'all better hear what I'm saying on this morning. They're fighting the devils of your grandfather and the devils of your father because you didn't deal with it. But I've come to pause for the cause and tell that devil that he's a liar, that it stops right here. The curse stops right here because I'm going to deal with it. My son will not deal with my demons. My daughter will not deal with my demons, but it stops right now. I need for you to tell a neighbor, tell him it stops right now. 